Hello and welcome. For this AS level topic for biology, we are looking at biology and disease, and in particular, we are looking at pathogens and lifestyle and how these two have an effect on the health of individuals. Now, when we talk about pathogens, we're going to deal with pathogens first, and when we talk about pathogens, we are often talking about microorganisms, and the three main ones we focus on are bacteria. viruses and fungi or fungi depending on how you like to pronounce it okay so these are the three types of microorganisms that we talk about and you must remember that uh, there are very many different types of microorganisms that are uh, harmless and some in fact are quite useful but when we're talking about ones that cause disease we are talking about pathogens So, microorganisms that cause disease are called pathogens, and that's quite an important keyword for you to remember. But in terms of bacteria, viruses, and fungi, well, what are we talking about here? I've got some diagrams of different kinds of bacteria. They have various shapes, not just ones that I've shown here, but they do have other shapes as well. But we've got spherical ones that are in kind of clumps. We've got ones that are in uh, like a chain shape and some that are even rod shaped. Now you don't necessarily have to be aware of the different kinds of shape and, and so on for this topic but I think it's good to be aware of it as we build on the biology and build a, on our understanding of biology as we go in later topics. So here we have some different kinds of uh, bacteria. They are typically a few micrometers in size. Uh, micro being shown by this funny U-shaped uh, symbol there, micro, looks like that, and that actually means a millionth of a meter. We'll be dealing more and more with these levels of measurements as we go through our biology studies. Next one we have is viruses, and viruses are much smaller than bacteria. Here is an example of a type of virus called a bacteriophage or bacteriophage. And you can see here it has quite an interesting shape. It doesn't look like something that's linked with being living. It looks more like a spacecraft, but that is one type of virus there. We have another one here, quite regular in shape. And again, not necessarily important to remember the different shapes and sizes uh, as yet, but probably good to be aware um, of the size in terms of compared to bacteria and also maybe a little bit about the structure as well. So if I were to have a look at say these rod shaped bacteria and compare a virus in terms of size we can see that they are very very tiny in comparison to the bacteria. You can hardly see the virus there compared to the bacteria but that's what the relative size of these are to each other. The last type of microorganism is fungi and here I've got example of one that causes athlete's foot so that's this more filamentous and stringy type of um, fungi or fungus there another one we have is yeast and yeast we've come across before in our GCSE studies that's quite a useful microorganism but it can actually in some cases cause disease as well so how do these things cause disease well firstly they actually have to get into the body and once they're in the body they have to reproduce and once they're uh, in the body and reproducing they have to fight against the defense system of the body and they have to damage cells and tissue and the way they can get into the body is either through the respiratory system or through the digestive system there are of course other ways you could get a cut that, that would allow pathogens to get in and there are other uh, parts of the body where they can get in but the ones we're looking at is the digestive system or are the digestive system and the respiratory system um, an example of something that could cause a problem in the digestive system is something like cholera and then we're going to look at that in detail later but that's a bacterium that could get in and cause uh, quite severe problems um, also we've got uh, the respiratory system here because we're exchanging air with the environment this can allow the entry of bacteria and viruses as well so these are the two main ways or in fact two two of two main of some of the ways that bacteria and pathogens can get into the body and what do they do once they're in well the first one the first thing they do or they can do is either damage cells or damage tissue and the other thing is that they can 
produce toxins or poisons that can uh, damage cells. An example of a type of microorganism or bacteria that produces toxins is salmonella. So if somebody gets food poisoning from salmonella, it's as a result of the toxin that are produced, the toxins that are produced by this microorganism. So that's an overview of how pathogens can enter the body and start to cause problems. But the other type of issue that we have that could cause certain kinds of disease is lifestyle. And lifestyle linked to two particular diseases, cancer and coronary heart disease. Now remember we're not dealing with things that are genetic, so we're not dealing with uh, whether you have a tendency through your genes to get cancer or coronary heart disease. We're talking about actual lifestyle choices and the level of risk that they might pose. Now risk is an important word here because we don't often talk in terms of or we don't often say smoking causes cancer. As a scientist you are better off to say or scientists actually say things like an increased amount of smoking will increase the risk of getting lung cancer. It's all about risk and it's all about looking at evidence and seeing what the risks are like based on that evidence. So what sort of factors do we have? We have smoking, diet, obesity, sunlight. This is linked with skin cancer because of UV that's found in sunlight and exercise that doesn't actually increase the risk of cancer. This actually decreases or has been shown to decrease the risk of cancer. But something like a poor diet will increase, smoking will increase risks and obesity can increase risks as well. When we're looking at heart disease, we're talking about coronary heart disease and it's probably worth just remembering that when we're talking about coronary heart disease, we're talking about um, disease of the arteries that actually supply the body or the heart should I say with food and oxygen and these are very important because if they if the heart doesn't get the food and oxygen it requires it could stop working and we call that uh, a heart attack. Now what are the factors that are involved here? Again smoking, blood pressure and by blood pressure we're talking about high blood pressure, high levels of cholesterol that are linked to diet and exercise and again exercise has been shown to be linked with decreased risks of um, coronary heart disease. Okay, so while in general these are the kinds of factors that we talk about, what you should be able to do is actually look at data and make comments on the data based on lifestyle and risks to health. Here I've got a graph that shows, um, I should have year written down here, but the link between cigarette smoked per year and deaths per year of people and we've got two axes, one on the left and one on the right and you can see that the green one here shows cigarettes smoked and you can see that's increasing from 1910 up to 1970 and then there's a decrease but we can also see associated with that is that there's an increase in the number of deaths per year um, as you go along linked with the number of cigarettes smoked. Now you can see here actually does continue to rise uh, even though the number of cigarettes smoked per year t uh, seems to go down and this could be because in fact we're talking about cancer, we're talking about possibly lung cancer and lung cancer takes time to develop and it actually doesn't often cause death in a short amount of time. Sometimes uh, death take a while to happen and that's why this graph could be actually continuing to increase for a while. If we were to look further on we might see actually a decrease uh, in the later years there. Another piece of data I have here is a look at alcoholic drinks per day versus heart disease and you can see the data here you have to be very careful not just assume that increasing the number of drinks is increasing risks you can see this data actually shows that for a smaller number of drinks one two and three these three studies actually show a decrease in risk it's only after four and in fact for C after five that we see an increased risk so the evidence here in some ways seems to show in fact, in three ways, it seems to show a slight amount of drinking will decrease the risk of heart disease. Now, what you might want to do with this data is actually go, go out and get some more. You wouldn't necessarily want to encourage people to start drinking two or three uh, drinks per day unless you've got quite comprehensive data. But in terms of what we've got here, it seems to show that two or three alcoholic drinks a day might actually increase, or sorry, decrease the risk of heart disease. Um, the last 
bit of data I want to look at here is looking at percent fat in the diet uh, linked to death rate from heart disease and this is data taken from 24 countries so we should have 24 dots there representing different countries but we can see there seems to be a link or a correlation between percentage of fat in the diet and deaths per 100,000 people from heart disease. Now something that's quite important to remember here, this is called a scatter graph and there seems to be a correlation but you've got to remember that this doesn't always show what we call causality or is not often a causal or doesn't necessarily mean a causal relationship. What I mean by that is that you have to be careful, you can't just say that an increase in percent fat in the diet causes an increase uh, rate of death from heart disease there could be a third factor that is actually affecting uh, death from heart rate so for example percentage fat in the diet might actually be linked to um, something like lack of exercise as well and that could be the actual factor that causes the heart uh, disease not the percent fat in diet so you've got to remember that scatter graphs don't often show causality there could be another factor that's involved here so you've got to treat that data carefully okay so this first topic for AS level uh, we've looked at pathogens and uh, lifestyles the key thing about lifestyles is that you have to be able to look at data and make uh, conclusions based on data that's what the kind of questions you're going to get in the exam are going to be like for this particular topic anyway that's me done for now thank you for watching and see you soon